Welcome guys to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Escape from Iron Gate by Pressman. And in the game, you're basically going to... So the whole point of the game is that you have um, cards that you have to fulfill and you want to move from one area to the next on the board. There are four in total. And when you get to the end, if you fulfill that final card, then you escape so the prison. So you're basically trying to escape from Iron Gate Prison. You'll start in the cell block, and hopefully you'll get all the way through the cafeteria and the warden's office, and then the first player to get out wins. It plays three to eight players, takes about 45 minutes to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages, well, pretty much eight and up, I suppose. Yeah. Anybody can play this game. The game involves drawing and competing and rolling dice and attempting to solve puzzles and little escape room style objectives that you'll use the board actually and the cards itself you trade back and forth with the commissary and the board and people around you and if you can escape you're the winner and only one person wins because whoever makes it out first is successful everybody else is kind of stuck in there welcome to iron gate prison and as you can see there is a ton of stuff in this game which we'll go over right now there are action cards puzzle cards lucky cards rare and common items you're gonna have the board you'll have meeples for the players dice that you'll be rolling as well as your action and puzzle dice which you'll be rolling each turn to decide which of these two actions you get and whether or not you're lucky gate cards some player references this handy dandy and annie's dakota ring essentially in a cardboard fashion addition paper and a pencil for when you draw uh, and of course you're going to be getting this handy dandy timer which you'll be using at certain points in the game so basically at the beginning of the game everybody gets their own meeple they're dealt three common items and then everybody will also get a set of four of these lock cards and at various difficulties and everything else can just be set to the side and easily accessible exactly and the game is fairly simple you're going to roll the die and then after you roll the die, you're going to go ahead and perform whatever action or puzzle it might be. Most of the puzzles will let you actually take an entire round to figure it out. And if you can or can't, it will determine what types of prizes you get, which are going to be these common and rare items. And then after you solve your puzzle or do your action, you're going to then be able to choose to trade with a commissary, trade with another player, pass a gate or do nothing. So for the first player, he's got his three uh, common item cards. He's also going to get three gate cards. And these gate cards will tell him or her what they need in order to successfully get from one area to the next. So in this case, he needs a rope and a toilet paper. And if he happens to have a rope and toilet paper in hand, at the end of the turn, he can use that to move from the cell block to the yard. Then he'll discard that gate card and he'll need to do the next one, which is the cafeteria, and it'll tell him what he needs. And that's basically the idea of the game. Every round, you'll have the opportunity to move from here to here to exit and if you can do that you win when you start your turn you're going to take these die and then you're going to roll them and when you roll them this happens so what what actually is this result so at the beginning um you will grab a lucky if it's one of the or if, i'm sorry if it's two of the same and then you will go ahead and grab a puzzle now if it were two a's you would grab a lucky and then an action and then if it's one of either then you only get one card here Exactly, yeah. So if it's two of the same, you're going to go ahead and get a lucky card. Most of these are going to be actions. You'll do them, you'll perform them. Sometimes they're going to be unique little things where you'll die. And then if they're not, and then after that, you'll go ahead and take whatever it is. If they have the two different choices where it's a puzzle or an action, you'll just not get lucky, but you can choose either of the actions. Puzzles will typically be something like this, where we will tell you some type of puzzle and you'll have an opportunity for an entire round to guess it, so you'll save this. Uh, or it'll be something like a word puzzle, or it'll be some type of thing like this. So you got, okay, the short fuse, uh, the short end of the stick or something like that. And you have to figure out these different puzzles and clues. Uh, you'll also be utilizing the different deciphers uh, around the board here to try and determine uh, what certain words are in this puzzle game. Uh, the action cards are actually going to be performed instantly. You're going to have have to draw one of these three things and basically for the puzzles and actions it'll tell you on this player reference sheet uh, the difficulty and how you can choose to make it easier or harder and on here this case here is rhino is the easiest thing to draw and drawing snoring is the hardest thing to do and if people can guess it you'll get rare items or common items and so will they so the better you do the harder choices you make the better items you can get rolling the dice gathering the cards performing the actions saving the puzzles and then of course you're going to trade and trading, like I said before, is you trade one of these items to this area and you move on to the next one. Or if you cannot do that, if you don't have the items required in order for you to do so, then you can trade with another player. You can say, oh, I don't want this common item. Would you like to trade with me? It's a book. I need some set of clothes or I need this or that. And you can trade in that fashion. You can also trade to the commissary and it'll tell you you can trade three identical common items for a rare or you can trade three rares for any rare of your choice. And then 
And there's a unique thing. Each of the different blocks here are going to have special items, which will count as a wild. So basically you can manipulate the market uh, by trading soap and turning it into rope. And then that will end your turn. You can only move from one block to another. If you choose to do that, you can't trade. If you trade, you can't move and vice versa. If you trade with the commissary, you can't trade with another player. And the next player will get a chance to go. Rolling the die, performing either the puzzles or the actions, and then passing their turn after choosing to trade or not. And getting to the end of the board. And if you can do so, you're going to win Escape from Iron Gate. You'll be the first person to escape. Everybody else is stuck in prison, unfortunately, and you guys can go ahead and decide to play again if you'd like. So let's talk about Escape from Iron Gate. It's basically a party slash puzzle escape room style game. You're going to be attempting to roll dice, gather cards, utilize those cards in either like one full round or of course performing the action instantly, which is generally going to be drawing, right? Yeah. Is What else can you do in the action deck? There's some other things, right? There's like uh, uh, certain different types um, of... There's acting. Oh, there's acting. That's yeah. right. Yeah, so in this case here, you have act it or draw it cards. And this, you know, you can act it like a tent or a volcano if you want to be a little extra, or you can go ahead and simply try and draw it, whether it be rabbit, spotty, or alarm. And the difficulties range. Uh, I think that for the most part, the ones that are more difficult are actually indeed more difficult, more challenging to do, but they will generate you better rewards because you need rares in order to get through, and each gate is more complex than the next one. Yep. So you... If you don't have a rare item, uh, you can trade, but you're still going to be in need of that. You need to actually do the difficult ones at some point or find some unique little loophole. Uh, like in this case here, having three of the exact same common will get you that rare. So even if you're not a great actor or drawer, it's still possible. But always attempting to go a little bit harder is going to be beneficial. Uh, what did you think about the puzzles specifically? Uh, the puzzles were really difficult for me. Um, I got one of the decoder ones immediately, and after that, if I got, you know, this option where I could choose, I always went with action. Yeah, if you have the um, A or the, and, the, and, the P, and the P, you have the choice to choose, and she always went with that one. Right. Um, but, no, I think the puzzles were really cool. They did have, like, picture ones. Um, some people got them instantly. Other people were a little bit confused by them, I think. But... Some puzzles are more challenging than others, and mm -hmm. I think it's based on uh, what type of puzzle it is. I, I Although, I got stumped on a lot of the the picture ones. Yeah. I was okay with the deciphering because I started to figure out how they kind of function. But even when you decipher them and you see how the board works, they don't give you all the letters. So you still have to actually, even if you know everything about how the pu puzzles are solved, there's still additional things and thoughts that you'll need to put in in order to figure out. It might be a yeah. bookcase. So O's might all be missing, right? It might say, okay, V turns into B and C turns into K. And you're like, okay, B blank, 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 K. Okay, so what is that word? And you have to actually figure it out, even though the deciphers aren't there. So it'll kind of like give you sort of what you need to know, but not all the information. And then the puzzle ones, it'll be like, what, what was the one I got screwed up on with, with one of the puzzle oh. ones? Burn, burn the uh, candle at two ends. Burning the wicked, the both, wicked ends. both ends. I guess yeah. I'll never have to forget that one again. But it was like working hard day or night. So if you chose to just instantly figure it out, that's hard. Or you can ask for a clue from your neighbor and that makes it like medium or whatever. Yeah, you get a common instead of a rare. Oh, you get a common instead of a rare. Uh, the puzzles typically will benefit only you. However, the actions will benefit you and the person who guesses. So you'll participate right. in charades or drawing and people have an incentive to help you because they want the items as well. And of course in this game, when you get far enough along, people will stop wanting to trade with you. You'll still get to take the actions and the puzzles and whatnot. So you have to be a little more conniving as to how you choose to do certain things. But it makes it a little more challenging, I suppose, if you get in farther ahead than everybody else. Uh, the trading ability is very useful, especially since if no one will trade with you, you can still trade with the commissary yeah. or the wild uh, trade that you can do uh, on, on on each of the different areas, and they're different. Um, really, really fun. Lucky is cool too. Now, uh, lucky may be actually lucky or not lucky though. So oh, when yeah. you roll both of the single letters, it can help you or hurt you. What what do they typically do? Um, I remember one being something along the lines of you have to make somebody lose a turn. Yeah, that, that, that was the nastiest one. Yeah. But there's other ones where you have to roll the dice and whoever gets to eight first is the winner. Yeah, there's like mini games. There's a bunch of little mini games. So some of them are dexterous where you'll actually take a die and you'll throw it from the cafeteria to the basketball hoop and whoever's closest will actually get a rare item. Uh, all of those type of things. They kind of lets everybody play all at once. So this is part party game. This is part dexterity game. There's drawing. There's acting. There's puzzle solving. It's a little mix of pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. um, and 
uh, quality of the components. I think that the quality of this game is high, high is, is great. This is uh, one of my the most solid Pressman game party games. It has all the beautiful meeples. They're thicker and they're actually custom. They're different. All uh, the cards are nice and thick and sturdy. The board is nice. Uh, the timer is nice. You'll use the timer for certain types of uh, drawing and, and acting ability things. And that has a little decoder thing, which actually works. I tried to see if I could peer into the, 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 the cards to see if I could read it still. And it's really hard. You pretty much can't do that without somebody calling you on it. So they did a good job of making sure that you cannot see the answers while you're trying to guess uh, the different types of puzzles and riddles and whatnot that are in store in the game. <laughs> a solid, fun party game. Uh, what about you? What do you think? Um, I really liked it. Uh, I think it's good, especially for people that are like just starting out in gaming. Yeah. Um, it's not difficult enough that it would make somebody not want to read the rule book. The rule book is super simple. Um, but it's also enough that it's not Monopoly. Or... Yeah, this is kind of like Cranium, right? Yeah. It feels like Cranium. You don't get the Play-Doh, but you do kind of add modern gaming to it, which is allowing yourself to move, sa saving your hand management, resource management, using those cards to move from one cell block to the next, uh, eventually out of the warden's door. So there is that little complexity added to it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to trade with certain people. There's a little bit of cutthroatery that can happen in the game. Uh, but overall, it's a very unique style game that functions kind of like those cranium style party games it's kind of like a variety show where mm -hmm. you get to participate in uh and i had a lot of fun with this one this one plays up to eight players and more players is good it doesn't hurt you because even when it's not your turn you're still playing the game for the most part and the ones that are like the puzzle ones it's really quick you roll the die you gather the puzzle and you pass your turn and then while everybody else is taking their turn you can actually sit there and Think about what your puzzle is. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're going to figure it out or not is kind of up to you, but it gives you that av availability to kind of play the game while other people are acting. You can decide if you want to participate in that or focus more on your puzzle. What way is going to benefit you the most? If you're a great guesser, you can focus on those. And if you've already, or if you've already, if you've already guessed it right, or if you're a terrible guesser and you know you're going to get that one rare item that you need as opposed to getting a common from guessing, you can simply not do that. And you have these options. Uh, I'm keeping this game. This game is going to stay in my collection. I think it's a great party game. I think it's a game that I can bring out for pretty much anybody who's newer to games. Uh, anybody who likes games like Cranium that are a little, uh, it's a, a little less like a cart party game, a little more strategy involved. Overall, a super solid game. Uh, what do you think? Overall quality of Iron Gate? Um, I actually really liked it. It's crazy too because most of the time in games I don't really notice cards, but these cards actually felt really good in the hand, yeah. which I never say, but um, <laughs> the artwork is also super cool. It at first I was like, oh, you know, like the color scheme, but then it makes sense. I mean, you're in a prison, like everything is pretty dull and... It's like, still vibrant. It's, it's so, just it's, it's just pretty. like yeah, it's pretty, but also like non vi It's weird, uh, but it works really well in this yeah. game. It has the party feel when you're looking at it and when you're starting to draw things. And you see how the game functions after a couple rounds. It's really easy to get into this game and teach mm -hmm. it. The rule book is very simple to understand, and there's a lot of variety. I mean, you can trade with pretty much anybody, um, but there are restrictions as to how you trade, which is also nice. Uh, right. You can't just do whatever you want. It's not like here's a, a thing that you can go ahead and just play. They give you specific rules to how it works but you have the availability to basically trade however you'd like whenever you would like with people to get yourself ahead and get them ahead as well there's cooperation in this game but overall in the end only one person wins so for me a solid party game this one's gonna get my seal of approval for anybody who likes games like cranium Groovy. thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Escape from Iron Gate. That's right, <laughs> by Pressman. <laughs> if you want to pick it up, there's a link down below in the description. Also, don't forget to... Subscribe. That's right, and hit the bell notification button. If you want to go ahead and comment, let us know what you guys think about this game. Please let us know your thoughts down below. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. Uh, we have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more on there. And we're going to be releasing our own game on March 2nd called... Moonshell. A mermaid game. It's my it's my wife's game, Callie Wright, and she is designing a beautiful puzzle game that I think is going to do rather well. I think, uh, it, especially when you guys get a chance to play it and see how it's played, it's a beautiful game and has some really great components that I think you're going to enjoy. That's all I got. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you, Ashley, for participating. Of course. And as always, I look forward to escaping <laughs> Iron Gate or seeing you next, next time. time. <laughs>